Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Triangle Strategy Walkthrough. Uh, so I'm actually just getting ready to fire up uh, what is going to be my third uh, guide for the game. Uh, I've, I've actually already done the third and fourth routes. So my first playthrough, you know, was, was Benedict's route, basically. Um, or Benedict's ending, I guess I should say, right? There's a bunch of choices that you make throughout the game. Um, and so, in, and I ended at Benedict, uh, and I also got Travis, so that, that kind of gives some hints as far as, uh, you know, the route that I took. Uh, second pass-through was, uh, was getting Corentin and, uh, Trish. And then this third one here, uh, I've already done it, technically, right? And, um, and I've already beat the game again, but this one's gonna be a Roland route. Um, and I should say, I actually was, I, I, let me back up. It was Fred, Frederica's route was uh, was kind of like the ending of the of the last uh, pass through for my game. Um, so again, this one is going to be uh, a Roland route, which actually is only going to get us uh, Cordelia. And then my fourth pass through, which I've actually also done as well, uh, I'm going to do a full uh, Golden Path, which would be uh, obtaining Milo and uh, Evlora. And again, I've already done that. So actually, technically, I've already added Cordelia, uh, Milo, and Avlora to my roster. I don't know if I'll use them, though, because, you know, I don't know, I guess for, for, for my, technically for my third pass-through, I actually didn't have access to uh, any of those three. But that said, I don't know that th that, that would be much of an issue in, in terms of a walkthrough, right? Um, but we'll see. I, I don't know if I'm going to end up using them. It, it seems to me that uh, Milo is amazing. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I really, uh, well, I mean, I, <laughs> I didn't know until I actually got her, but uh, I was, I've just been kind of playing around with her a little bit and uh, some of her abilities just are amazing. Uh, and it's mostly her temptation skill. Uh, like, you know, from a, from a, like a gameplay standpoint, uh, and especially on hard mode, uh, it's very, very beneficial to charm enemies. And you know, up until obtaining Milo, uh, I was actually only able to do with that with Lionel. And Lionel's uh, success rate with his, uh, I think it's like Insight, or something like that, is not very good. Uh, but Milo's is is crazy, crazy high. And so, um, I, I don't know, I. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to actually, you know, use her, although again, keep in mind, I, you know, I wouldn't have necessarily had access to her uh, for my third pass through the game, but um, we'll see. Uh, but anyways, uh, I am going to do as I've done with my, my last two playthroughs and, and play on hard mode. Uh, I, I love the challenge, I gotta say. I mean, I, I did try out some of the other difficulty levels, and man, it's, uh, it's just a walk in the park compared to hard. You know, hard mode is is uh is intense so uh let's get this started um yeah so this will be the the third pass through and this will be the start of the rolling on the road. faraway continent of norzelia three mighty powers reigned the kingdom of glenbrook through which runs the mighty norzelia river bringing flourishing trade the grand duchy of esfrost a land of ice and snow beneath which slumbers rich veins of iron and in the desert, the holy state of Hyzant, home to the lake from which is harvested the salt essential to life. With each nation controlling one vital resource, conflict between these three powers was all too common. Minor disputes and skirmishes gave rise to fierce battles and before long, the realm was engulfed in a bloody conflict that would rage on for years. Many died in what came to be known as the Salt Iron War. Brought to their limits and facing their mutual demise, the three powers at last negotiated a truce. The Norzelia Consortium is formed, a neutral organization that oversees fair trade of iron and salt. Finally, peace came to the realm. Thirty years pass. Now, a new bond is set to be formed between the Grand Duchy of Esfrost and House Wolffort of Glenbrook, whose power in the kingdom is second only to that of the royal family itself.
Lord Serenoa? Good morning. Congratulations, my lord. The future of Wolford is looking brighter than ever. Today's the day, is it not? We're all ready for the big moment. Thank you, everyone. Young Master, Lord Serenoa. So, you were here after all. Ah, Benedict. It would seem word has reached the people already. You can thank Eridor for that. He couldn't refrain from blabbing the news to anyone who would listen. I'll have a talk with him after. This is a momentous day. Not merely for our domain, but for all of Glenbrook. I do not think it possible to keep it a secret. This is well and true, my lord. But you must consider your betrothed's lineage. I'm well aware of the situation, Benedict. I cannot say for sure what repercussions this may have. What I do know is that the people rejoice for us and harbor hope for the future. As the future Lord of House Woolfort, I must rise to the occasion. Fine resolve, my lord. As House Steward, I will do all in my power to assist. Thank you, Benedict. It is heartening to have the support of my father's right-hand man. Shall we head to the port then, my lord? So soon. I had thought we would have more time. The river's waters have risen with the heavy rainfall earlier this week. And given the wind, I think it likely that Esfrost's ship will arrive ahead of schedule. You never cease to amaze. Very well then, let us be on our way. Alright, and its frosty warship arrives at Wolfort Harbor, Harbor, where a woman with rose-colored hair and her attendant disembark. I thank you for the escort. You are free to go. Lady Frederica, there is no one here to receive you. He will be along shortly, no doubt. If I have heard true, he is not the type to keep a lady waiting. By your leave, then. We wish you everlasting happiness, my lady. Thank you. I shall work hard, both for my new home and for my motherland. Please let brother, the Archduke, know that. As you command, my lady. We leave the rest to you, Gila. I shan't let you down. Phew, Glenbrook at last. Finally, we can take a moment of respite from our long journey. That said, it would seem we've arrived ahead of schedule. I much prefer it to being late. This is a momentous day for Esfrost, and for the entire realm. We cannot afford to make a bad first impression. I agree. Which is why we cannot have you looking so tense. Why don't we go for a bit of a stroll? A fine idea. After all, this may be the last time in a while that I am free to do as I please. 
Most are not inclined to grant liberty to one of Roselin heritage, such as me. You brought that pendant with you? Of course. It is the only memento I have of my mother. <laughs> Thank you kindly, little lady. Letting a whole boatload of guards go back home was a stroke of genius. We heard tell you'd be here, and we wanted to be the ones to welcome you. The winds of fortune are blowing today, aren't they, Pa? Brigands! Stand back, Frederica. I shan't let them have you. Alright, um, so before I, <clears throat> excuse me, before I head in here, uh, I'm gonna go to the encampment and take a look around. Man, this is really loud, alright? I just realized I turned my volume up. <laughs> alright, uh, so at this point, uh, you know, on, on New Game Pluses, uh, it's always a good idea to check in with Archibald and, um, and check what he's got. So, uh, you can buy, and I, I don't know if this is the correct, <laughs> like, this would be like the correct list for... Uh, a second New Game Plus, but uh, it looks like he's got two Medal of Braveries in stock, two Medal of Valors, and then two of like all of these uh, weapon upgrade items. Uh, and then I think I've already bought everything, um, like the, the, the rest of this stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, I know, and I, I can't remember exactly when, but at some point, uh, Marvels of Norzelia Volume 14 and 15 became available. Uh, and I actually ended up, I bought those as well, but, uh, anyways, you know, not a, not a bad idea to buy, uh, promotion items and, uh, um, you know, weapon upgrade items if you still need them. Uh, I've got everybody fully upgraded, everybody is, uh, fully promoted as well. Um, and again, I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if I had all of that done at the end of my second new game, uh, or, I'm sorry, technically at the, the end of my first new game plus. Um, but also some things, uh, become, or became available as well. Uh, so, the, the last of the, um, uh, jeez, the last of these... Uh, mo mental mock battles became uh, available as well. Uh, let, let me let me take a look because I can't remember which one is which. But um, four of these correspond with with uh, the ending that you uh, that you choose, or yeah, like the ending, or like the final path. Um, so let me take a look here again. Yeah, mental mock battles. All right, let's let's zip down here. So lift off. Let's see here. Uh, lift off is. I'm not seeing. Okay, Roland's ending is. Okay, I think <clears throat> I think lift off must be just just for beating the game. Um. Yeah, so that that looks like that was available. You know, after basically in my first new game plus, I, I I'm already l a little rusty on on these ones but anyways uh let's see here so next one is under the gates uh this is actually only available if you've already uh got roland's ending so this actually wasn't available um or it wouldn't have been available right like if this was technically my third uh pass through because i did uh benedict's ending first then frederica's then i did roland so roland's became kind of available at the end of this playthrough in the beginning of the next uh new game plus pass um, let's see here. So before the goddess, that actually became available right now, uh, or again, or, or would have become available now at, because the last new game plus that I did there uh, was Frederica's ending. So again, keep that in mind. Uh, Long Trek becomes available after Benedict's ending. So that was I went with Benedict's ending uh, for my first pass through the game. So this has been available as well. 
Uh, and then the Assassins is actually only available if you get the Golden Route done. So um, again, that wouldn't actually be available quite yet. I just noticed there the Panacea Pellet is, uh, is a reward there. That's kind of nuts. Um, and I actually haven't tried that one out yet. And, and I actually, I don't think I will for a while. Uh, but yeah, again, you know, that, uh, or this wouldn't actually technically be available quite yet. Um, let's see, next up here, let's take a look at, uh, weapon upgrades. Actually, I, yeah, so I already did all of my weapon upgrades. Um, yeah, Milo, again, Milo isn't really supposed to be available, right? Because that's, uh, that was my golden, so I actually went golden route on my fourth playthrough. And, uh, during the golden route, I got Milo and Avlora both. Um, and man, I, I gotta be honest, I think that, I mean, she is just so good. Um, so of the kind of four characters that you get, kind of depending on what choices that you make uh, in Chapter 15, I think I think Milo is probably the best. So because it's so I my first playthrough I went with Travis. Now to be fair, I actually really was happy with this though as well. I really like Travis. Travis is you know just basically a bruiser that. Um, you know, has really good health, good defense, good magic defense. He's kind of just good, like, statistically. He's pretty quick, too. And then he can steal. And uh, I actually really enjoyed, you know, stealing. I'll, I'll be honest, though, I don't think it's as good uh, in this game as it has been in, like, a lot of the other games that I've played. That's not to say that it's completely useless, but uh, it's, it's definitely not as good um, and as beneficial, again, as, as against some of the other uh, games that I've played. Uh, it's still worthwhile in some very specific uh, levels. I I vaguely remember uh, Frederica's and Frederica's path. It was no, I'm sorry. It, I think it was Roland's path. God, if I'm remembering correctly, I don't. I'll, I'll have to look again. But uh, there's there's one of them where in the in in like the final few battles, uh, Lila, you fight Lila. Actually, that must have been my last playthrough. I'm pretty sure it was my last playthrough, right? And I fought Lila, I'm pretty sure. Um, but anyways, she uh, she has a really good steal. Like, it's like a speed bracelet, which is one of the best accessories in the game, in my opinion. So, um, again, very, actually very happy that I got Travis uh, for my first playthrough. And I mean, I gotta say, I mean, not to kind of toot my own horn with here, but I think the order that I did uh, my playthroughs in uh, worked out really well. Again, I went I went with the the Travis route the first time, which is to give uh, give the Roselle over to Hyzant, uh, and then choose to check up on the Roselle during Chapter 15. That's how you get uh, Travis, and um, and then I went with you know Benedict's uh, route. So I thought that that worked out really well because you know if you basically if you hand over the Roselle um, and I and I forget which chapter that is, it's like seven or eight or nine or something like that. Um, if you do that, you're locked out of the Golden Road. So I knew right away that I wasn't going to be doing the Golden Road on my first pass with the game. But, you know, I, I feel like Travis, you know, or getting Travis was, was pretty good. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and again, probably, probably pretty happy with, uh, with that choice. But anyways, um, so he, he's actually, I would argue, a better thief than, uh, Trish. Trish can, Trish can steal as well. Uh, the difference is, uh, his, his, uh, his success rate is higher. Now he has to be in melee, though, right? So that that can become kind of a problem. But uh, in most cases, uh, I, that's that's fine because it, you know, and in, in when it really matters, uh, I don't think it was that big of an issue. Now Trish has her um, uh, her act again uh, ability, which is which is really nice, and uh, makes it so that she can kind of steal. I mean, it's kind of like a built, and it's not really a built-in Roland, right? It's not as good as that, um, because Roland can just give that out to somebody, and when she uses it, that uses her turn for that turn. So again, it's, you know, it's basically a buff that she puts on herself, and then her following two turns, she gets to act twice. So it is actually very efficient, and it does allow her to, you know, after that first turn, then she can steal twice in a row for her following two turns. So, you know, kind of basically a, a four attempts at stealing uh, within, I guess it's a total of three turns, right? Because again, your first turn, you have to actually use act again. And then again, the next two turns, it's it's two actions. So, um, you know, a very, 
she's very good. The, the problem, though, is she's got uh, her success rates with Steel are just nowhere near uh, Travis's. So that's the one thing that I don't really like about her. Um, but she is Archer, obviously, so she's got range. Uh, she's got some really good movement and stuff as well. But I think for my first playthrough, I was, you know, I, I think that, that, and that's kind of what I would recommend doing is, is you know, going the Travis route first, uh, picking him up. And that's if you decide to, that you're going to steal, right? Um, so anyways, yeah, second pass through, I got uh, Trish. Wow, I feel like I'm on this gigantic tangent because what I'm really talking about here is, uh, you know, who to get during chapter 15. So um, it's basically, it's Travis, Trish, Cordelia. Where is Cordelia here? And Cordelia will be, you know, this playthrough. Wow. Did I pass her or am I just blind? There she is. Um, Cordelia is a healer. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't really, I don't really like her that much. Uh, she does have the increased range though on her abilities, which is very similar to Gila. So she can, she can stay fairly safe and heal, which is really nice. Uh, and then she's got, um, let me just see here if I can... Uh, bring this up here with my roster. Um, we'll take a look at her her different different uh, abilities. God, I had the past job I did right there. All right, so let's see here. Um, she's got regen, which I think is pretty good. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's pretty good. And also, it's only one um, one TP to use. She, so she, she can technically get, you know she can use this every turn. Uh, and then with her extended range, she can you know throw this on characters from really far away um heal okay so heal is is pretty strong um power is 230 where's uh let me see where's gila at i want to see i want to compare this to gila's gila's would be cure cure wounds yeah so only 170 on cure wounds uh the thing though uh, with her is uh she's got for those in need so you know, when characters are below half, she really uh, heals a lot of um, of health. You know, and which which is exactly what you would want, right? I mean, that's just an amazing passive. Um, but uh, Cordelia's actually her basic heal is actually just a little bit better, uh, but for the two TP, and that actually kind of is a problem, though. Um, you know, it, it's that's pretty expensive for a single target heal. Um, I mean, again, slightly more power, but uh, that's it's a rough TP cost. Uh, the thing is, though, she does get rest and recover TP. So this says grants one TP when not moving on your turn. That actually is really good. Um, and it's really good in certain levels where you know that you're kind of just going to... I mean, the thing, with, um, the thing with hard mode is you really are playing defensively the entire game. And oftentimes, uh, my strategy has been to just uh, kind of kind of let enemies come to come to me uh, and um, and you know and and basically uh, whittle them down a little bit as they're coming in uh, and then you you know you then you can kind of branch out a little bit and, and meet them a little and fight but um, that you know Cordelia and her rest and recover TP does synergize pretty well with my gameplay style right if you're not running to the enemies constantly and you know and, and chasing them down and stuff um, so if she can sit, <clears throat> you know, if she can sit in one spot, that also means that she can actually use heal every single turn. Again, if you're not moving, um, because she'll get the one extra TP generation uh, for her passive. So again, um, you know, as long as you're not moving, she's kind of a beast. Uh, healing region here, now this is 3 TP. Uh, it's basically the same range as Sanctuary. Uh, but it's stronger. So Sanctuary here, it says, uh, you know, 136 power, uh, whereas Healing Region, 195. So again, stronger, but more uh, TP cost. Uh, and then she's got uh, Helping Hand, so it says, Grant a little HP to an adjacent ally at the start of your turn. So, um, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like this could be, could maybe be good for, like, an archer or... A caster that's taken a hit maybe and um, you know you're kind of sitting back uh, you know I mean it could be good for other characters as well but you know usually she's not gonna be you're not gonna want to have her standing next to like melee troops right right kind of like up in the thick of things uh, you kind of want her to be hanging back but um, that is that is I mean it's not it's not nothing you know it's it's definitely something um, elude here so raise an allies evasion for three turns uh, I I don't 
I don't know if this is better. I haven't tried this out much, um, and I really should. Uh, but I'm curious how this compares with with like spice, because we should be able to use uh, spice to do that too, right? Let me just check here. Uh, so evasion spice, yeah, increase in allies evasion for three turns. I'm gonna have to test this out. I'm I'm very curious uh, what the difference would be because I mean if that's not stronger uh, than a spice, then that's not very good, right? Because that's gonna this is gonna cost you two TP. I guess the range is zero to five though, so she can cast this from farther away, right? Um, so I guess that that is one uh, benefit that this has over over a spice. And I should say also, uh, at the end of my uh, last playthrough there, I used Anna to basically tank, what was it, like five different troops by herself? Uh, and I didn't even need this skill to do that. So I just have to assume that, you know, this, is, this would be even better. Um, and and maybe, maybe it would make it so that other characters are able to... Uh, you know, tank in the same way that Anna was. I'm not sure if I'm 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 fully, uh, you know, I'm not sure if that's fully the case. But you know, Anna and certainly Groma have amazing uh, evasion stats, and so uh, that could make them you know even better. Uh, and then her last skill here, self sacrifice, decrease your HP by 50% of your max HP to recover an ally's HP by 50%. Um, that's pretty cool, uh, but you can't use that if your if your HP is below 50%. So like this is really good for for I, I suppose like you know healing tanks, um, you know because a tank is going to have more more health than you know a, like a caster is going to right and so I don't know being able to heal them for half of their health I mean honestly it's good on everybody but uh, it's even better on on tanks because you'll be healing even more you know to the to, to anybody that has a lot of health. I suppose that probably works out pretty well with uh, like the HP increasing accessories as well, which I don't really ever use, but uh, something to think about. Uh, and then above and beyond, I haven't used this yet, but grant HP to an ally ignoring the maximum limit. Again, that should be really good as well. So you, you, you throw this on somebody and then send them into the thick of things, right? Or throw it on somebody that you know is about to take a hit. Um, and I mean, it, it's basically a bubble, right? And then the power is 355, so that's that's kind of nuts. Uh, obviously, though, very expensive. Um, so uh, so that is the third character again. Cordelia is the one that I'll be kind of getting right on this playthrough. Um, and then Milo is My, Milo is last though. And again, I, I just have to say that uh, I think of all of these characters, I think Milo. I should say, of the four characters that you choose, basically during. Uh, chapter 15. I do think that Milo is the best. Where is she at? Am I blind? Um, I am. I'm just going blind here. Um, and I think honestly it's because of uh, for, for, for one thing Stardust is really good but Power of Love is amazing as well. Tempt all, <clears throat> tempt all enemies within range for one turn. And that works I, I think that works 100% of the time depending on uh, if an enemy has like a resistance to it. Like, the, like it doesn't work on the bosses but um, you know, you can really hit a lot of characters uh, doing this. And so there's certain levels where, you know, the enemies are, are coming at you and, and you're not able to kind of cut them down soon enough. And so what better way to basically nullify, you know, their turns, um, but also, you know, the other enemies will oftentimes target them. I think that actually Temptation is one of the most powerful um, I, I don't know if it would, if you want to call it a status effect, right? But it's one of the most powerful, yeah, status effects in the entire game. Uh, the fact that you know, basically, again, it, it it'll make that that specific enemy not hurt you uh, for a turn, but also oftentimes it'll draw other enemies uh, into attacking them, and so you have the enemies kind of doing your work for you. Uh, in addition to you know re reducing uh, you know damage taken as well, so. Again, of the of the four characters, I do think that uh, she's the best. And then the the bonus with uh, you know the golden road is a Valora. I haven't really used her yet. Um, I'll see. Maybe maybe I don't know if I'll do that this playthrough if I'll use her. But uh, she's pretty interesting too. I don't think I'll go over her abilities though because we're kind of running out of time here. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much going to be it uh, actually for this one. I'll uh, you know I'll keep I'll keep going. Um, 
with this playthrough here, and I think I'll, I'll keep kind of running it the way uh, that I had uh, my other ones, where we'll just, you know, knock out these battles. I don't think I'm going to do the mental mock battles, though, either, because I kind of feel like at this point there isn't that much reason to do them. Um, you know, the ones towards the end of the game do get you some superior uh, items, but I don't need them anymore. Uh, and I think what I'll do instead is kind of after all of my, my playthroughs are done, I'll, I'll just do another, because usually I, I do the battles, you know, separate. And uh, I'll probably do the same thing with the mental mock battles um, that, I, that I haven't, you know, kind of got on camera quite yet. And I'll just, you know, make them separate videos. So uh, anyways, that's going to be it for this one. As always, hope the guide was helpful and thanks for watching.